bang, we have it. We have something. I finally have something to show for all this setup. Hello and welcome to the third episode of my series. And today we're going to try and get Whisper going to see if we can get any signal on VHF in Wagga. So something interesting that I've... Um, I should note about using the RTL SDR is this angle here. This is actually the RTL SDR, I'm guessing, is it's warming up. This is the angle that we get when we're warming up. It's something to watch out for because your PPM will um, drift at least for the first couple of minutes as you're warming up. So I've actually got this set to the whisper frequency right now. I was just about to jump on whisper and notice the angle that I thought I might mention in video. But what we're looking for is we're looking for eventually going to look for whisper signals around here, around this mark here, 144.490.5, depending on if you like to put the decimals in there for the, um, for the, for the hertz range. Now, if I load up the, bring up this window, we've actually got, get that out of the way. I've actually got the whisper map, and I'll zoom, 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 zoom in. Uh, I need to update this, actually. Let's hit the update button. So the whisper website actually has a nice little map of active stations that have been able to hear each other. Now, lots of those stations are hearing each other. I'm, of course, not getting anything like this, but meh, you never know. I'll give it a go. So KRR is hearing 5GF. And he's heard by 5GF. So it's actually going both ways. Now, if we click to, J, to GF, he's actually hearing a few stations. VK3ZAZ, that one's that one there. VK5ZRL, which will be the one up here. So he's hearing all three of these stations. And ZTE is another one that I'd like to be able to hear, but I don't think I can from this far away. Unless I get a bigger beam. You know, we're talking about maybe a 10 element. Um, beam on two meters. So what we're looking for is this guy here. Now it doesn't actually have it in the details. Normally if we don't have the hearing and heard by, it would actually tell us the transmit um, percentage. But normally I've found him on about 10% when I've looked at this map. So what we're going to do is we're going to take advantage of this and try and hear him in the noise and see if we can get something using the Whisper software. And this is actually the fun job of, um, or the fun bit of looking at all this stuff and having um, having a bit of play, you'll notice that in my sideband or USB or upper sideband um, bandwidth there, we've got one, two, three carriers. Now, I'm pretty sure all of these are just noise. This one might be a whisper station, but it seems to be too low a frequency for it. This seems to come up at a certain sample rate. So what I've done in the past is I go into here, stop this switch this back up to 1024 now the problem is as usual wait for that to settle there hit that and it will crash out stop reload that thank you press start again fix the gain it seems like a an arduous process to bounce back around and in and out and back and forth but let's go back here Let's make sure that it hasn't put me in the middle. The other problem, the other thing I like to avoid is being in the dead middle, which I think is right there. So we don't think we have a problem there. Zoom right in. And you'll notice that the carrier we had at 403 is gone. Or 4, 4903. 4908 had a carrier as well. And so did about, I think it's about 4892 had a carrier. All of them are gone. So sometimes picking your different sample rates actually can get rid of some of these little birdies here. Just a little tip for those that are um, playing around with the RTL SDR. So as we're starting to look at Whisper, I thought, you know, I'm going through the trouble of setting this up. I thought I might show you how to set up Whisper to work with SDR Sharp. This is probably the easiest way to get it going. Um, and the most important thing you need is a piece of software to be a virtual cable. So I'm using VB Audio Virtual Cable. Um, it does the job really well for me. It basically just creates a virtual output for SDR Sharp and a virtual input for the Whisper software. I can do that. Now let's load back up the Whisper software across to here. Now it is also set up with the cable. Now I've set it to send the cable output there. It was mainly because um, sometimes I had this a little bit over and it was still trying to transmit. It should be working okay now, and what I can do is hit the play button. That will stop. The application will crash. Load that back up. Go back in. 
flick back and forth. Now bring the Whisper software up here. So we've got that. Now we might not be able to see the carriers there, but Whisper can do that. Now let's turn idle off. And what will happen is you'll see the clock there is at 3.33 or 3.33.10. What we're waiting for is for, I think it is 3.34 UTC is where the next block will start. And this will automatically start scanning it in and look for the signals. And if it finds a signal, it will spit it out. Um, the thing with Whisper is that the, everything's transmitted. Only a couple of characters are transmitted in a two-minute block. And you don't transmit all the time. It's not like a normal beacon. So you really have to leave this there for a long time. And that's what we're going to do. We've got it pointed straight at KRR. We know that he's um, transmitting right now and he's receiving. I'm going to leave it there and see if I can get anything happening from this. And I just had to start the recording again. We actually have something popping up right there. This is one of the spots that I've no noticed noise before. Now this will be, because it's 4908, it will actually be out of the range of the, um, of the Whisper software. But there's definitely something there, and it started at roughly the right time. So if, if that does switch off at the right time, I'm going to adjust the frequency so it's so it's within the passband here. Obviously, the PPM's a little bit out, and Whisper is an extremely accurate, um, well, needs an extremely accurate frequency and time. It too, it does needs it needs an accurate time as well. I think it's within a second it has to be. Anyway, we'll keep track on this and um, see how we go. All right, so I thought I might turn the recording back on. We actually have, I'll flick to here, we actually have a carrier down here. Now, I've adjusted for what could be a little bit of drift in the RTL-SDR, or the inaccuracy. And we've got a carrier that's coming down here, and it seems to be timed properly to whisper. So that's 4908. I've adjusted for 300 hertz, so it should come up as 4905. Now, what we're waiting for is for this section to finish. So we're at 5310. So what we're expecting is that this section will finish somewhere around the 50 second mark, 50, 55 second mark, and it will pretty much instantly decode it. Now, I don't know if that's a strong enough signal. We are seeing a signal. It doesn't seem to be varying in frequency, but Whisper doesn't really vary in frequency much. So let's see how we go. So that should come out. It could come out anywhere between these two because the accuracy of this waterfall display isn't the best, especially when we want to do this. Now, bang, we have it. We have something. I finally have something to show for all this setup. So I have actually received VK2 KRR from probably about 30, 40 kilometers away. And he's saying, or is that we are saying that he is on 48, 483. So there, finally, we got it. We got a signal. This is this is actually the first signal that I've been reliably able to receive from this station. Now, in the first episode where you saw a little bit of a beacon received from Gippsland, that was actually recorded the day after this video. So I'm just really happy that I finally got this station. Now, later on this night, I got a lot more, um, lot more copies from KRR, and I also picked up a VK1 station. So the next episode, I'm going to play around a little bit more with Whisper. And if you'd like to see more of these videos, definitely um, definitely subscribe. Once I pull down this um, VHF antenna, I'm going to be putting up HF, and it'll probably be a fairly permanent setup. And I'll play around a, bit, a little bit with um, some digital modes. And yeah, you'll get to see some of that setup next episode, how I'm going to do that. Catch you then.